Hey everyone, Rob here from Octagon and uh, welcome to another Divi UI challenge. It's good to be uh, doing another one again after a couple of weeks break. So what you see on your screen right now is one of the hero sections that we produced for one of our more recent, uh, I believe it was January, January's um, uh, giveaway, freebie giveaway. And it was a pack, uh, as you can see here, of a whole bunch of different hero sections that you can uh, you know, add to your website. They all have different styles and everything like that. And this one here got some particular love. Some people really, really liked it. And to be honest, it was probably my favorite of the bunch as well. It's pretty cool. You know, who doesn't like a Porsche? Or Porsche, as some people say, but I believe the actual pronunciation is Porsche, but correct me if I'm wrong there. So I'm gonna show you how to build this one. Structurally, quite simple, but uh, visually quite nice. So let's, let's have a crack at it. So I've just created a new page here. It's called a Porsche Hero section, and we're using the Divi Builder. Um, I've set it as a blank template, and I have published as well, just to make it easier um, working locally on a local machine. I'm gonna use the Visual Builder. So that will give us our blank page with its default uh, section, and we're gonna add two column row. Very cool, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna close this module settings there, and I'm going to, um, Open up the row settings. You make this row full width. I'm going to use custom gutter width, set to one. Uh, we're going to play with the padding later on, but I'm just going to leave it for now, um, just so that when we are playing with the padding, we've got some sort of visual reference to work against. Um, design, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to, uh, to equalize column heights. We're going to find the column one settings. Now we've got three colors that we're working with from this design here. Um, we've got an orange, a gray, and the text gray, I guess you'd call it. And so I'm gonna grab this gray color, and that's our column one background color. Great. I'm just gonna put some padding. Okay, 120, right is 80, bottom 120, left 120. And we went, we'll be able to play with that further uh, later on. Column two background color, we're gonna leave because uh, that's right, we're gonna do background image. We're going to use the picture of our Porsche. Now I grabbed this um, this grab this photo uh, as I often do from unsplash.com. If you do know about it, it's great. Um, and I just reduced it down to 1920 um, wide, which is actually actually a pretty large image still. Um, and especially because it's only covering half the page, I could have easily gotten away with something smaller. Um, but anyway, that's what I've gone with. But you could easily drop that down to um, 1280 or 960 or, 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 or whatever as well to reduce that file size. Cool, so we've got our columns sorted out, got our background in there, let's drop in some modules. The first one I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna use a blur, but basically this allows us to put in a bit of a, a temporary icon, sorry, a temporary logo by using an icon. So if you, for your actual website, if you were to use this design, you would um, you know, use your, your logo itself. But I'm just gonna use that sort of atom symbol, which is kind of cool. Grab our orange color. And use it there. Now I got that orange color from um, just getting a color picker and putting it on the tail lights. So that's how we get that that nice match between the colors. Um, I'm just going to place it to the left. Cool. So next one, we're going to add another module now. And I'm quickly going to grab. I'm just going to copy it over. This is just some placeholder Latin. Um, so just to show that I'm not copy and pasting any formatting. I'm just gonna paste it into the text one there. So I'm gonna make it heading one. I'll make it light as well. So that makes our color, font color white. Cool, we will now go over to our header fonts. And, oh, all right. I can't exactly remember what I used. So here's a little trick for when you want to try and find out what the font was used in a, on a website, you can right click, inspect, and you give this, this uh, inspector. And because I did it on the text that I wanted to look at, you can see it's got the H1 tags there and you can see a little bit of text there. But if I look at that, I can go over here, um, hit computed. This shows you all the CSS styles that have been applied. And if I scroll down and find font family, Roboto, that's the font that I've used here. So we can go back to our, that we're building. And Roboto, 
Actually, it's Roboto Light. There we go. I think it might have just cut off on the screen when we were looking in the inspector there. I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Let's go 44. For some reason, I can't do uneven font size numbers. I don't even know if that's a thing, but anyway. Um, and I'm just going to toggle back to the other design, have a look. Compare a bit. It's a bit smaller, actually. Forty-two. That 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 looks good. Line height. We might make that one point two. Just give it a little bit more space. Cool. And I'm just gonna highlight that. Command B or Control B makes that bold. Or you can obviously use the little uh, UI piece as well. A UI icon or button, I should say, which is over there. Great. I'm just going to click away, which will allow me to add in another module. And we're going to go text module again. Should we get back to our, our original and grab that text there as well. Once again, I'm just going to paste in there so I don't carry, accidentally carry over any formatting that we don't want. Um, design. Once again, I'm actually going to check out what font family we're using. So there we go, you can see the uh, P or paragraph tag, computed, font family, lasso. So this is just um, body or paragraph text. So we're just looking for the standard text and lasso. And I'm gonna make that 16 as well. That looks about right. And our text color, is our text gray, which I think is slightly lighter. Yes. Add another module, the button. And the button text is just gonna be let's go. I'm just gonna default that to light. Although we are gonna style it differently now. So let's just go over to just over to the design tab and yes we're going to use custom styles I'm going to reduce the size of the um, the text a little bit just to 16 pixels um, button text color so let's have a look at what we're making anyway so we're going to be producing this orange um, button so uh, I need our orange color button text color is orange button background color is transparent. I am just going to set it to white and then do that. I'd just like to be, the default is set to transparent, but uh, I like to be, you know, I like to just define it myself if that makes sense. So just to make sure that we're going to get exactly what we want. Uh, so I usually just set it, when I'm doing transparent, I usually just set it to white and then drop the alpha, which is the fourth, um, fourth number in that string there. And um, that is what um, makes it transparent. Border width, oops, one pixel. Border color, it is already defaulted to the text color, which is orange, but let's define it anyway. So I'm just pasting in our orange color. Border radius, uh, oops, sorry, six. But a button, button letter spacing, we're going to leave. Button font is. Um, Lato. There we go. Add button icon. No, we are going to turn that off. And I'll explain this. There isn't a, a, a technical reason why we're turning it off, but I'll explain that shortly. Um, button hover text color. We're going to make white. Button hover background color is orange. Border color, also orange. Border radius, six. Now, if you, if you don't manually set these, they often, they'll just re remain the default or stay the same as what is defined up in the, um, the normal state, um, which is sometimes okay. Um, but I just tend to like to be explicit about defining them. Cool, so that's what we can achieve within our design settings. So we're gonna do a little bit of, see so you can get a hover effect there. Gonna do a little bit of, um, just a little bit of custom CSS. 
for the button. So over in the CSS tab, main element, padding. This is going to basically increase the size of our button, which is cool. Let's just start with 12 pixels. We have to define important. Uh, now, if you've never come across that before, um, sometimes uh, CSS works in a way that you can have multiple rules, and sometimes those rules can conflict. And when they conflict, the rule that is chosen is based on um, uh, priority, I suppose, or uh, if priority is not the word I'm looking for, but that will do for now. I don't think it's a technical term. So in this case, because we didn't have, when we tried to define padding, somewhere within the CSS of Divi, padding has already been defined, which makes sense. But it has been given priority over our CSS that we are defining here. So sometimes when that's the case, the case you can say, look, I just want to increase the priority of, the, of the, the CSS that I'm writing. And you can do that just by putting in um, important or exclamation mark important. Um, I don't tend to like to do that um, because it suggests that sometimes the CSS isn't quite structured quite right. Um, but sometimes you just have to do that and that's just the, the nature of the beast. Um, so I'm going to go 12 pixels, 20 pixels. And what that does there is it's given us 12 pixels top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right. So I'm actually going to make that bigger again. It's looking all right. Let's have a look at what we got there. Might even make that 34. Drop that to 10. Actually, no, I'm going to do that 12. I'm actually going to go back to the design. I'm going to reduce the font size a bit. I think we had it 16. Yeah, it's a bit closer to what we had. Good. All right, the last little bit of custom CSS is we're going to do some box box um, shadow. So I use this um, this website that I've used plenty of times, it's cssmatic.com slash box shadow. But if you just Google CSS box shadow generator, you'll end up either at this site or, or something like it. Um, but what it does, it helps you yeah, build out your box shadow without having to type this all out, which is nice. So I'm gonna go zero horizontal length, zero vertical length, below radius, um, I'm gonna go 20 just to start with. Spread with zero is fine. And our shadow color is gonna be our orange. Oops, I didn't have that on the clipboard, so let's grab it now. There we go. I'm gonna drop the opacity, it's at 0.75, or the alpha, to 0.5. So yeah, you can see it's generated that little snippet for us. Um, it's good to know what you're looking at and what, you've, what it's created for you. But once you do know, there's nothing wrong with having it generated for you because it can be a little tedious typing all that out. So it's going to copy that text. Go back to, oops, wrong one. Our builder, CSS, drop that in there. And you can see it gives us that cool glow. And the idea behind the glow is it matches the, uh, the glow that we're seeing on the tail lights, which is cool. So it looks like the last thing that we need to do is just work on a bit of margin between um, our different modules. So I'm gonna start with the blurb module and go into margin, bottom, 20 pixels, 30, 30 looks good. And this is just one of those things to play with. So from our heading, do the same, margin, bottom, 20. And then on our text module here, design, bottom, 20 again, no, I want more than that. What's 40 look like? That looks. Oops. There we go. Like I said, you just play with it. I'm actually going to reduce the margin between the heading and the um, the body. Oops, sorry. I'm on the blurb. I want the heading. Yeah, let's leave it to default. So, that looks pretty close to what we had. Might increase the uh, margin on the bottom of this um, module. Cool, and then it's just a case of the next, the final steps really, I, I think that looks good. It is slightly padding, slightly different to what we had originally, but that's fine, you can play with that. 
and you basically end up with what you feel looks good. Um, what we're also going to just do is, actually we can just do it, we don't have to do it down here. So we're just going to make sure our padding looks okay on the different screen sizes for the, for the rows. So just kind of row settings, design down to column one padding, which is what we need to focus on. And that one there gives us our, different, our three different sizes. So if I go to tablet and have a look. I might even just drop that down to 80 for tablet. And for smartphone, I think we can leave that as well. I don't know, I'd, I'd give that 60. It's important to do that and it's easy to forget but to consider different screen sizes when you're building things out. So, let's save that. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these, this padding top and bottom from the section and the row, which we kept at the start just because it gave us a bit more space. But now that we've got the content in there, we can, uh, we can get that out of there. And there you go. That's how, that's how we built it. That's how you can build it if you would like or build something like it. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed um, watching. Please leave any thoughts, comments, uh, or ideas for future um, UI challenges as well. Uh, in the comments on, on the YouTube um, video or even on the blog post. Love to hear them. Thanks for your time and see you next time.